As almost all of you know, we have precautions we take because of the coronavirus. Seating is limited due to social distancing. Any overflow crowd will be asked to go out to the courtyard. Song sheets and worship aids are available in the gathering area. They are single use only. If you don't take them home with you, you leave them in the pews and they will be collected afterwards by the sanitation crew. Our aisles are one way and marked with arrows. Face, let's see, social distancing is required at all times in the church. Face masks are required in order to attend mass. St. Thomas provides face masks for those who need them out in the vestibule. The offertory baskets are not passed person to person, but rather there's one right here in front of the pulpit and one over by the baptistry and the Easter candle. Uh, you can place your contributions in there either before mass, during the offertory hymn, presentation hymn, or um, after mass, or you can mail them in. <laughs> the sign of peace is retained, but without physical contact. Communicants are asked to take their masks off as they come up for communion, um, yeah, rather than keeping them on and carrying the host all the way back to the pew. Um, people are, communicants are strongly encouraged to receive communion in the hand. As you may know, many bishops require this in their diocese. Um, and if someone does insist on communion on the tongue, the Eucharistic minister will return to the altar area, re-sanitize their hands before resuming distribution of communion. You may remain in church as long as you like after well, within reason, <laughs> after Mass for prayer. Um, but we ask that you not visit within the church or the gathering area, but rather if you'd like to visit with some of your other members of the parish family, please do so either in the parking lot or in the courtyard. Uh, yeah. And once again, leave all papers in the pews, if you will. Many thanks for your understanding and your cooperation, and a good, good to see y'all. Again, welcome to St. Thomas. Tonight we're celebrating the liturgy for the second Sunday of Lent and you have uh, pink handouts that have the song lyrics on there as well as the psalm. Please check your telephones and anything else you carry that goes off at the wrong time and put it on some kind of do not disturb mode. Tonight our celebrant is Father Adrian Cook and he's being assisted by Deacon David. Let's stand and sing our gathering song in these days of Lenten journey.
Once again, we begin this liturgy with the words that recall our baptism in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, God reaches out to us and invites us to come closer to God. We are aware that we have not always answered God's call fully, and we pause now to acknowledge our sins and give thanks that ours is a God of mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the revelation of God to us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have lived a life of love for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you help us along the way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on <coughs> excuse me. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, so that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how, we, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, cast in a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's scriptures give us two very different but very dramatic incidences in the history of salvation. Uh, the gospel account, of course, of the, what we call the transfiguration of Jesus, a change in his appearance that was visibly obvious, also the voice from heaven, the appearance of Moses and Elijah representing Moses and the prophets, uh, their ancestors in faith, and the voice from the Lord uh, introducing or affirming, confirming that Jesus is the beloved son. <laughs> then shut up and listen to him, you know. 
But in our first reading from the book of Genesis, we hear the dramatic account of God asking Abraham to sacrifice his son. As a matter of fact, if you read the text carefully, it uses the word slaughter, uh, which I think is less clean, if you will, uh, more dramatic, and gives a better feel for what Abraham feels he's being asked to do. Now, as with all old priests, I studied Latin and Greek. Uh, didn't say I learned it, just that I studied it. <laughs> uh, never did try Hebrew. Uh, my older sister, the Sister of Mercy, did. She said it looks like pig and pigeon scratch on wet sand. And I never got much past that. But I have it on good authority from the scholars. I once had a scripture professor who would translate from the Hebrew Bible just like he was reading it, you know, from uh, the day's uh, Bible, English version. Uh, if you even look at the English text, for most versions of the book of Genesis, you will see that at the beginning, it says, God spoke to Abraham, or revealed to Abraham, that he was to sacrifice his son to God. But then we hear about the preparations that he makes and everything. But when it comes time for the actual sacrifice, the scripture says, a messenger from the Lord came to Abraham. And from then on, with the exchange, it's the Lord. Now, we use the word God, and Lord, uh, Almighty, kind of interchangeably sometimes. Uh, and so we might not notice the real significance here. In the Hebrew, when it says, God spoke to Abraham about sacrificing his son, it uses the word Elohim. Elohim is a, was a common word for God among the Semites. Um, as is El Shaddai, Adonai. And they mean God, or even sometimes gods. Um, and they can be, you know, different gods like Baal. Um, but when it says the Lord's messenger, that's, they use the term where God reveals his name to Moses as Yahweh, the Lord. Sometimes translated, you know, I am who am, or I am isness. Uh, but it's Yahweh, which is God's personal name. So it's like, at the beginning of the story, Abraham has an understanding that, like most people of his age did, that God was a vindictive God. He punished if you, did, if you offended him. God was a God that needed to be appeased for blessings. You made sacrifices so that you would have a bountiful crop. You might make a sacrifice of some offering uh, before marriage, that the marriage might prosper. Uh, you could make a sacrifice at any time uh, as a way of bargaining with a god uh, for a favor, a blessing. What happens here in this story? That merits Abraham 
the title, our ancestor in faith, the father of faith to some extent, is that he experiences a transformation in his understanding of who God is. That this God who had offered him and he accepted a covenant, that this God who had promised Abraham that he would have descendants as numerous as the sands on the seashore was a God of love who wishes well, wishes good things for everybody. He loves us all. And he invites us to understand him that way, to accept that love and to respond to it. And that's what means more to our God than any sacrifice. It's a powerful moment in Abraham's life that changes fundamentally his notion of what a God is and confirms that there is only one. And while he is all-powerful and omnipresent and all-knowing, he's also loving beyond our wildest imaginings. And he wants us to live in that love. And of course, that's the message that Jesus brings to us all when this God of love became one of us, not as a representative to talk God into being nice to us or forgiving our sins, but to be one of us and to show us by this loving God, willingness to sacrifice his son as a perfect sign of how much he loves us. Of course, it happens in the presence of what, Peter, Andrew, James, and no, Peter, James, and John. Thank you. Gotta have these deacons. <laughs> um, to give them what it takes to go from being a disciple, a follower of, a student of, to be an apostle, one who is to go out and to be part of this message, this ministry of Jesus himself. They have a new understanding, like Abraham came to a new understanding of God and his love, they are reassured now of just how much Jesus is of God and that he is a summation of what God has been doing throughout the history of the people. From Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, Moses, uh, down to this very day. And God loves us so much. He just wants us to understand that, that he loves us. And that can determine how we live the rest of our lives. Please stand as we profess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In joyful hope for the coming of the reign of God, let us pray. Our prayer response this evening is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Stephen Reka, and all the church, that we may be a source of transfigured life for our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, that we may seek a path to justice together, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are struggling in any way because of the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people suffering from natural disasters, especially the people of Texas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the prayers that we offer in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those in our parish book of intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas, the men and women of the armed forces and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died in the peace of Christ, may Al Alivar receive the gift of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Most merciful and loving God, we come to you in our weakness, we come to you in our fear, we come to you with trust, for you alone are our sure hope. We beseech you to remove the coronavirus from our world. We ask you to bring reconciliation to our civil discord. We ask that you protect all humans' life from conception until natural death. Stabilize our communities, unite us in our compassion. Remove all fear from our hearts and fill us with confidence in your loving care. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. As we offer ourselves and other gifts, let's sing together this alone.
My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show, show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion heads to the glory of the resurrection. And so together with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly here on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we, pe we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, Though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate the death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our decreased, deceased brothers and sisters, whom we now humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Together we pray now with confidence as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, David.
This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who have been invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Oh Lord, bless your faithful people, we pray, with the blessing that in, excuse me, oh Lord, as we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you for allowing us, while still here on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Once again, we'd like to thank you for being patient with the coronavirus precautions. Good to see y'all. Uh, please do leave any papers on the seat of your pew so they can be collected by the sanitation crew in between masses. We ask that you not visit either in the church or the gathering area, but if you want to visit, please go directly to the parking lot or to the courtyard. St. Thomas Parish offers Catholic College Student Ministries. And they have a weekly mass and meal on Wednesday evenings at 5.30. Uh, and a weekly Bible study Sunday nights at 7 o'clock. St. Thomas also offers Stations of the Cross on Fridays of Lent from nine, once at 9.30 in the morning and again at 7 o'clock Friday evening. The Knights of Columbus again will, will offer two college scholarships for high school seniors this year. There are more details about that program in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. O Lord, bless your faithful people, we pray, for the blessing that endures forever. Keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all and stay with us now and forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.